A viewer named Hugh Jass leads off today's show. That can't be a real name, can it? He says, predict the 2022 stats for Coram Rushing. So Blake Coram Rushing, Diamond Edwards receiving, and Ronnie, ba- Ronnie receiving, and Andrell Anthony's receiving. So I don't necessarily have a projection for Ronnie Bell as much yet, but I do think I have a good guess of what we can expect from those other three guys, considering what we saw last year and knowing, of course, that uh, they are not coming off injury. But want to make sure you guys knew today's show, the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports, is presented by Manscaped. Folks, tomorrow is Father's Day. You forgot, right, for your dad. Um, hell, if, you, if you're you're getting a gift for yourself or if you think the people in your life forgot about you, if you're a dad, make sure you tell them to get the Platinum Package over at Manscaped. Use our promo code GOBLUE, no spaces at manscaped.com, for 20% off and free shipping. All right, you are watching the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports. It is our weekend mailbag. Tomorrow's Father's Day, but, hey, we are in here in the office doing all we can to bring the latest Michigan football news and rumors. So you saw that question at the top of the show coming in from Hugh Jass wants to know about Blake Corum, uh, Diamond Edwards, Andrew Anthony, even mentioned Ronnie Bell, although I didn't prepare anything for Ronnie in particular. How about Blake Corum though, right? Expected in his third year as a Wolverine to be Michigan starting running back. Um, won't have as many carries as Hassan Haskins did last year, right? Hassan had a ton of carries. Um, I think Blake will increase his carries by about three to five a game, projecting him to be about 900 and some yards last year, projecting him to have 1,200 yards and up his touchdowns from nine touchdowns that he had last year to 14 touchdowns this year. Now, you saw one stat at the bottom of the screen, 5.3 yards per carry, down from the 6.6 that he had in 2021. And it's to be expected, right? Hassan Haskins was getting the bulk of the carries and the bulk, certainly the bulk of the carries inside of the 20. And they really used Blake Corum in a lot of different ways to free him up on carries and was you know, running the read option with J.J. McCarthy like you saw in the Big Ten Championship game. So I want to know from you guys, as the starting quarterback for your 2022 defending Big Ten champion Wolverines, uh, starting running back, uh, how many rushing yards will Blake Corum have in 2022? This is the part of the video you might get hit with a YouTube ad break. So if so, go down, let me know down in the comments. I'll make this the pinned comment today's video. Predict how many rushing yards will Blake Corum have in 2022? Diamond Edwards. The backup running back. But we saw more of him in a lot of ways last year as a wide receiver. And, hell, how about that throw? I just watched it a little bit ago. That 47-yard throw in stride he made to Roman Wilson in the Big Ten Championship game for a receiver. I think you're going to get a lot more receptions from him this year. And he might actually have uh, more receptions than quite a few of Michigan's best wide receivers. They won't go for a ton of yards. So I'm projecting this 42 receptions, 535 yards, averaging 12.7 yards per catch, and three touchdowns. I doubt any of those touchdowns will be inside the five or 10 yard line. So if he gets those three touchdowns, why I'm projecting him only to have three and our next guy to have more than that is because I think most of his touchdowns or all three of them that we're projecting will come when he breaks one, he catches one out of the backfield on a wheel route. I doubt they're going to be throwing him screen passes inside the five or the 10 yard line. The guy who will get most of the passing attempts in the end zone once Michigan's in the, inside the 10, the 15, the 20, I believe, will be Andrell Anthony. You saw a lot of that last year, an acrobatic catch he made against Michigan State. The nice catch is the only touchdown Michigan scored against Georgia. 38 catches for him next year, right? So not as many as Diamond Edwards, but he'll make them more impactful. 17 yards per catch, 650 yards, and seven touchdowns is what I am projecting for Andrell Anthony. I bet that seven touchdowns, if I were to guess, if I were just looking at all the wide receivers, Michigan has this year. I'm guessing those seven touchdowns will lead this Michigan football team. All right, so we got to 20,000 subscribers earlier in the week. Thanks so much to everyone who subscribed. Now, 25,000 is next. I don't know. Can we get there by the season? Probably not, but I definitely want to hit that 25,000 mark during this 2022 season, so we only need 4,000 920 more. So if you haven't subscribed, we're putting out 20 Michigan football videos a week in June, July, and August, and then every single day of the 2022 Michigan football season. It's the Michigan Football Report by Chat Sports. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Question coming in from Micah Hoshikawa. Cool name. Hoshikawa, what are your thoughts on potential? Could I say Koa again? Let's just say it for me. Hoshikawa. Micah Hoshikawa. Good name. Uh, what are your thoughts on these potential basketball transfers getting held back uh, at the last second and stuff? So 
I don't necessarily think it's um, you know just a basketball thing. I think it's a University of Michigan football thing. And the transfer rules that this athletic department is you know made to abide by by the university, these transfer rules stink, folks. Why? It's because, well, why didn't this guy transfer to Michigan? Why did he say he had academic issues, this and that? The way Michigan does it is they feel that transfers kind of cheapen the Michigan degree. So if you're a third-year guy and you've already got, let's say, you know, close to your entire college career out of the way, if you got too many of those credits in another school, you've got to basically do two full years at Michigan to get a Michigan degree. Half your credits have to come from Michigan, so it's really going to hurt Michigan. They're either going to only be able to get like first-year guys who transfer for the freshman year who really don't care about one semester of credits or Grad transfers only, right? The guy who plays two or three seasons and wants to transfer for his last two seasons or last three seasons potentially, if you registered, Michigan's not going to get those guys going forward unless the university changed the rules. And for that, folks, I say those transfer rules stink if you want to be a competitive football program, basketball program going on to the future. Don't stink down below with Manscaped. Just had a sexual experience myself, folks. Let me tell you, the grades I got were A+. Plus, and it's all because of the Platinum Package at Manscaped. Father's Day is coming up tomorrow. I'm expecting to get all kinds of action down below. And I'm going to enjoy myself because the Platinum Package. you got uh, shower gel. You've got shampoo and conditioner. You've got the ball deodorant. you got the Manscaped boxers that I'm wearing right now that are awesome. That travel package and the Lawnmower 4.0. 20% off using promo code Go blue, no spaces. All the stuff you buy it separate. It's like two hundred and seventy bucks. The package typically one hundred fifty four ninety nine, one hundred and twenty three ninety nine with your twenty percent off. So treat yourself, treat the guy in your life, treat hey your dad hasn't been getting any action at home around there. Boom, they'll give him a little nudge, send him some manscape. Things will start uh, you know improving for him in the bedroom. Manscape.com. Use promo code Go Blue. Question coming in from Dougie Fresh. Who do you think will be this year's breakout player on defense? I took this question because I've addressed this, uh, you answered this one uh, in the past, this offseason, but it's been about a month or so since the last time I talked about really defense because everyone wants to talk about offense this year because people think, oh, Michigan's going to have this great, this wonderful offense. Not so much as defense because you know you lost your best three, four, five players last year to the NFL and the NFL draft. I think it's going to be this guy, folks. I think it's going to be. Freshman starting linebacker, who is now going to be a sophomore starting linebacker, Junior Colson, uh, the top 100, 150 recruit going into the 2021 class, or out of the 2021 class. He took over as a starter, I think the fourth or fifth game in. He was getting a lot of snaps early on. But I think he's going to be your breakout player, right? I think he's going to be a breakout defensive star, much like Devin Bush was in the 2017 season. Not saying he's going to be that type of that type of player, end up being a top 15 pick in the NFL draft or anything like that. But I'm excited about Junior Colson. If you go back and watch the film, now watch the film just against Ohio State alone and Iowa when he really started to emerge as a player, understand what his role was in this defense. He was flying all over the ball. I think as a leader now in this defense, you're going to see much more of that from Junior Colson. Steelers fan 16, who do you think will be the starting tight end, Eric All or Luke Schoonmaker? Um, I think it's a question that there's really not much question in what the answer should be, right? It's going to be Eric All. He's been the starting tight end for uh, the 2021 season, most of the 2020 season outside of uh, him having the drops he's here and there. We saw some good things from Luke Schoonmaker, right? He scored a t- couple touchdowns down the stretch of the year, made a few plays, but Eric Gall should have a huge year this year. Uh, if it's J.J. McCarthy and Michigan throws the ball 30-plus times a game, you should be seeing six, seven targets per game for Eric Gall. If it ends up being Cade, Cade McNamara, maybe a few less, but we saw the connection those two had last year. Who was the guy when Michigan was down with a few minutes left against Penn State, who was the guy that made the game-winning play that Cade McNamara counted on? It was one Eric Gall going 47 yards for the uh, go-ahead touchdown with a few minutes left to give Michigan that road win against Penn State and keep the Big Ten championship ship dreams alive. But Luke Schoonmaker, right, he's going to be a solid and strong contributor this year. Michigan hasn't run a ton of two tight end sets since uh, Josh Gass became offensive, court, defense, offensive coordinator in 2019. They really went away from it at all, even the tight end position in a lot of ways, late into the 2020 season. It reemerged with Eric All last year, and then Luke Schoonmaker got in there and made some plays uh, late in the season, touchdowns uh, in the Big Ten championship game, et cetera. So Schoonmaker is going to be on the field. He will probably won't get 20 or 25 catches, but I think you can expect Luke Schoonmaker to get 15, 15 maybe 20 catches. Um, and I think he'll make one or two plays this year that cost uh, that that you know, prevent Michigan from losing a game or being close down the stretch. He'll make a big time play that puts them uh, ties a the game or puts them ahead when it counts, just like he did last year. So 
was talking to a friend here, uh, you know, a big Jersey guy, and I think jerseys have their place in our society as sports fans. So I want to take a little poll from you guys. Let me know, do you own a Michigan football jersey? I only own one. I bought it uh, the day before the 2017 Michigan-Florida game in Dallas. I bought the uh, the, the all-maze jersey, the first time Michigan ever wore those uniforms. It's the only jersey for a football team I own at this time. So let me know. Y for yes, N for no. If you type Y, go ahead and let me know what Michigan football jerseys that you own. Christopher Lee says, do you think there will be a maze out this year? So let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to glance the schedule. I don't think it's going to be the Colorado State game. Definitely think it could be that second game of the year, Hawaii, under the lights. Certainly think that could be a uh, a maze out for Michigan in that one. Probably it's not going to be homecoming. Um, and then Penn State or Michigan State probably – could be Michigan State, depending on is it a night game and how's the weather. It's always a bad idea to make um, maze outs when it's cold weather, right? If people can't, if people have to wear jackets if it's super cold. The game, the game is on October 29th. It's kind of right on the cusp of whether it's going to be too cold for a maze out or not. So if it's uh, warm weather, maybe that Michigan State game on October 29th. So people can wear T-shirts or those long sleeve tees. I don't think many people have maze coats that they can wear if it is cold weather. Next question from Bryant Williams. If Michigan football wins, wants to win another Big Ten title in 22, ah, 2022, J.J. needs to be the starting quarterback. Cade's arm strength is average. His mobility uh, in the backfield is below average. The running game was the threat, not Cade. And that's very true, actually. Um, there's no question about that, that Michigan's running game, the ground rate offense coined by me, was the reason that they beat Ohio State, destroyed uh, you know Iowa in the Big Ten championship game, but remember, Cade McNamara, he's the guy that made the play to beat Penn State, right? He's hung in there, hit Eric All on that touchdown play. He uh, made quite a few plays down the stretch last year, right? Who was there? Who won the Michigan the game against Nebraska? I think Cade McNamara said it afterwards. Prior Michigan teams would have lost that game against Nebraska. Cade McNamara made all the right plays. So I think Michigan fans want to just, uh, you know, act like he didn't exist last year and say, oh, this, this unproven freshman is the guy. Well, you know, let's appreciate a little bit what Cade McNamara did last season. All right, the end of video squad. If you if you're an end of video guy, you know what the MF means. Michigan Football Report. That's the uh, the acronym that we gave to the audience of this show last year. So if you made it this long, let's kind of uh, separate the men from the boys. Go ahead and type MFR. Let me know that you're an MFR, you're a viewer of the show, and you made it all the way to the end of today's video.